Welcome to section 8.2a. All right, gentle people, we're going to do a little bit of a review. So let's go ahead and say we want a pH of a 1.0 molar solution of HF. So I just have a weak acid in solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up the Ka of HF. Ka is 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And this makes sense because HF is a weak acid. I can identify the major species in solution, and that's going to be HF itself because it doesn't break up, and water as well. So what I can do is I can write down my reaction because HF is really the only important thing in there. Water is just the media. I can just go ahead and write the acid dissociation reaction of HF. So remember how we solve this? We're going to solve this using an ice table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my reaction up on top, HF plus F minus. I'm going to write I, C, E. And what I said was that I had a 1.0 molar solution of HF. And that means that I have none of this H plus and F minus here. I'm going to go ahead and make products because they're at zero concentration, which means I'm going to consume reactants and everything is in a one-to-one -one ratio. One minus X, X, and X is I plus C. So what we can do is we can remember that our Ka from that slide or our information sheet said it was 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And this is going to equal my products, X times X over my reactants, one minus X. We notice that we have a small Ka, and what that means is I can use my approximation x squared over 1, because remember, I'm saying x is insignificant when I add or subtract it. So then I can go ahead and solve for x. x happens to be 0 0.027 molar, which is less than 5% of my 1, so my assumption was correct. So remember that X equals my H plus concentration in this problem. So I can find the pH, which is going to equal the negative log of my H plus concentration. So I can go ahead and plug this number in. And what I get is I get a pH of 1.6. So gentle people, you should be fairly comfortable doing this type of problem because that's what we spent all of chapter seven doing. So now that we can calculate the H plus concentration and the pH of a simple weak acid in solution, let's go ahead and see what happens when we try to make buffers. Now, the first thing I want you guys to do is I want you to identify the major species when I add HF and NAF in solution. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and write our reactions. So we did our HF reaction last time, and we know it's an equilibrium between H plus and F minus. Now remember, because it's a weak acid, this side is favored. And so HF is the major species. There's barely any H plus or F minus produced from this, so those aren't major species. But let's take a look at NAF. NAF is a salt, and remember, a salt is going to be broken up completely, so I'm going to use a hard arrow, and remember what that hard arrow means. It means everything is going to the product side, so there's no NAF that's stuck together. My major species are going to be Na plus and F minus. And the last thing to always remember, since we're doing everything in water, Water is always considered a major species. Okay, gentle people, so if that's the case, let's go ahead and try to find out the pH of a buffer solution. So what I know is I have this buffer of HF and NAF. I just did what the major species are. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at this, and the strongest acid out of these things, which is going to be HF, and the strongest base out of these things, which is F minus, if the strongest acid and the strongest base are conjugates of each other, 
then write the equilibrium reaction of whatever that weak entity is, and remember to put the conjugate on the other side. Now what we have to do is we are going to go ahead and run an ice table on this. But before we get into running an ice table on this, let's go ahead and think about what's going to happen. So before I run my ice table, conceptually, what is going to happen to the pH? Now remember, what I calculated on my whiteboard is that if I had just a solution of just 1.0 molar HF, that means just the weak acid, we calculated a pH that was equal to 1.6. Now, if I add the NaF to the solution, what is the pH going to become? All right, so let's go ahead and tear this apart. NaF is a salt, so it's going to break up into Na plus and F minus. So again, we have our common ions. So if this is the reaction that I'm interested in, and I add F minus, which essentially means I'm adding product, Le Chatelier says that I have to relieve the stress. So that means I'm going to shift my reaction to the left. If I shift my reaction to the left, I'm taking my products and making it reactants. So that means that my H plus concentration is going to go down. And so remember, if H plus goes down, that means my pH is going to go up. So I expect that I am going to get a pH that is greater than 1.6. So let's go ahead and verify this by doing our ice table. So we're gonna start just like we did in the last whiteboard. I'm gonna write this reaction. I'm gonna write that HF is going to break up into H plus plus F minus. I'm gonna write down ICE for my ice table and let's go ahead and fill in values. So HF, I know I put 1.0 molar of HF into the solution. For H plus, I didn't add any H+, plus, but here's where the difference comes in. I have an initial concentration of F-. minus. So remember, I'm adding NaF to the solution, which means that I'm making Na plus and F-, minus. so F- minus is initially present at the start of this equilibrium. So remember, we had one molar NaF, it breaks up 100%, so that means that I have one molar F minus. Now I'm gonna still make products because H plus is zero. So this is going to be a plus. Both my products are gonna be a plus, And then my reactant is gonna be minus. Everything is in a one to one ratio. So I get one minus X, X, and then one plus X. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did last time which was we looked up our Ka value. That's gonna be the same, 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And this is going to equal my products. So x, one plus x, and then one minus x on the bottom. Again, my Ka looks really small. So I'm gonna make the assumption that anytime I add or subtract an x, that is insignificant. So I have X, and then I'm going to go ahead and times it by one, because I'm gonna eliminate that plus X, and I'm gonna divide it by one, because I'm going to eliminate that minus X. So in this case, it's really easy. X is equal to 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. X is equal to my H plus concentration, and so what I can do is if I want the pH, I can take the negative log of my H plus concentration. So I'm just gonna plug this number into there. And what I end up with is a pH of 3.14. So here is our eye clicker, and we can see that our reasoning was correct. We do end up with a pH that is greater than just the weak acid by itself. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to practice this on your own. 
So here's a buffer that I'm going to make by using 20 mils of acetic acid and 20 mils of sodium acetate. So when you guys go ahead and do this calculation, you should get a pH of 4.75. Now here's a hint, watch your total volumes in the solution. Remember, I'm taking two solutions and I'm mixing them. It's not like the last problem where I told you the final concentration of everything. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.